Ladies and gentlemen, everything is set to take flight. SpaceX has successfully completed the final crucial test with Flight 3 hardware, the wet dress rehearsal. There's a lot to unpack from this test and many exciting plans to explore afterward. Join us as we delve into these details on today's episode of Great SpaceX. After a few days of being rolled back from various locations at Starbase, S-28 was finally stacked on B-10, ready for testing. The road closure schedule was also announced, with March 3rd marked as the primary date, spanning from 5 p.m. that day to 3 a.m. the following morning. Finally, after more than half a month of waiting, the test took place. In the late afternoon of March 3rd, the road was closed, and even the entire village was evacuated. This early evacuation typically occurs when methane fuel is loaded or other significant steps are underway. Around 4.21 p.m., Chopstick was maneuvered into the testing position. Then, at approximately 7.07 .07 p.m., the venting process commenced. Subsequently, fuel began to be vented more vigorously throughout the launch area, from the launch tower to the tank farm. At approximately 7.34 p.m., the fuel loading process commenced. Similar to previous wet dress rehearsals, the fuel loading process proceeded rapidly with over 10 million pounds or more than 4,800 tons of cryogenic propellant loaded onto the two stages. Notably, this process appeared to unfold swiftly within just 45 minutes compared to the previous duration of 90. Since the latest tank farm upgrades, SpaceX has achieved an astonishing average propellant loading rate of around 1.5 to 2 tons per second. This impressive figure doesn't even include the simultaneous subcooling process, which likely necessitates several hundred tons of liquid nitrogen throughout the tanking process. These achievements are the results of the comprehensive upgrades SpaceX implemented in the tank farm system over the past several months. Returning to the test process, once the venting smoke dissipates, frost lines become clearly visible on both stages. Unlike the previous two tests, where the frost lines ceased rising after a few minutes, in this test, the white frost frost lines continued to ascend vigorously. At the peak point around 8.36 p.m., frost fully covered both stages, indicating a successful test. Subsequently, the detanking process commenced, with the collected and vented fuel being transferred back to the fuel tanks. SpaceX went on to post a tweet about the results of the test. Starship completed its rehearsal for launch, loading more than 10 million pounds of propellant on Starship and Super Heavy, and taking the flight-like countdown to T-10 seconds. Seconds. This tweet was also immediately reposted by Elon Musk as an announcement. Starship Flight 3 preparing for launch. Following this successful test, it's likely that the two stages will not remain in a full stack state until the launch day. Instead, they may be destacked to undergo separate tests once again. This approach enables SpaceX to thoroughly assess the status of each stage after testing, facilitating prompt repairs as necessary before the official launch date is determined. This test could potentially serve as the final assessment of the hardware before Flight 3's official launch date, which is anticipated to be announced soon by the FAA and SpaceX. This achievement marks a significant success for SpaceX, especially after two previous failed attempts in mid-February. The week-long repair efforts undertaken by SpaceX have proven effective, showcasing the company's agile working style, acknowledging failure, executing repairs, and ultimately achieving success. The successful completion of the wet dress rehearsal signifies that all aspects related to the hardware are primed and ready. This rehearsal was designed to meticulously assess the Starship's status before flight, replicating the countdown process from venting and fuel loading to checking the cryogenic propellant tank and more. It served as one of the final milestones for the vehicle before SpaceX was prepared to undertake an orbital launch. The only distinction from the official flight is the absence of a missile launch command. With these pre-flight procedures in place, attention now shifts to the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, the agency responsible for granting the official license for SpaceX's Starship. Currently, the FAA is likely awaiting final document submissions from SpaceX, as well as surveys from other agencies. Estimates for the official launch date remain unchanged, hovering around the second week of March or mid-March. Given the recent success of the wet dress rehearsal test, speculation abounds when the Starship will launch. We invite you to share your thoughts and predictions in the comment section down below. Now, while Starship testing progresses steadily, SpaceX has recently accomplished another significant mission this year. 
Crew 8. The Dragon Capsule, carrying four astronauts, was launched by Falcon 9 at 10.53 p.m. Eastern. Prior to liftoff, the crew boarded the capsule and were prepared for flight. Approximately 2 minutes and 34 seconds after liftoff, the booster separated from the second stage and safely returned to land on landing zone 1 around T plus 7 minutes 34 seconds. Meanwhile, the second stage continued its flight, separating from Dragon approximately 12 minutes and 7 seconds after liftoff. Dragon proceeded with the remainder of its journey to the International Space Station, or the ISS. The crew is slated to spend about half a year of aboard the ISS and is expected to return to Earth around August of this year. After the successful launch, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson immediately posted a congratulatory tweet. Crew 8 is on their way to the space station. Congratulations to NASA and SpaceX on a successful launch. We look forward to new scientific discoveries that will help fuel this new era of space exploration. Onward and upward. The recent mission also marked several milestones for SpaceX. They have achieved the significant milestone of launching the 50th person into orbit, marking over four years since the first launch in 2020. This flight also represented the fifth launch of Crew Dragon hardware, specifically the Endeavour capsule, following the Demo-2, Crew-2, Axiom-1, and Crew-6 missions. SpaceX has conducted a total of nine missions with NASA astronauts, with eight official missions falling under the Commercial Crew program and four private missions, including Inspiration-4 and three Axiom missions. In terms of the Commercial Crew program, SpaceX has been assigned to launch up to 14 missions. They have now completed more than half of this task. Looking ahead, they have six additional missions scheduled until 2030, along with numerous other private missions awaiting launch. Therefore, we can anticipate further records being broken in the near future. This can indeed be viewed as a commendable effort by both the SpaceX team and NASA. Despite facing delays of up to 10 days initially to alleviate the workload for Pad 39A and later due to weather concerns, the mission proceeded smoothly once these challenges were addressed. This successful mission serves as a solid foundation for SpaceX as they continue to progress towards their next objectives. And in the final segment of today's episode, let's delve into NASA's upcoming lunar endeavor, the Viper mission. This lunar rover, known as Viper, which is short for Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, is rapidly advancing toward its mission on the lunar surface. Scheduled for launch later this year, Viper will embark on its journey aboard SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, with a targeted launch window around November. Recently, it achieved a significant milestone on its path to the moon. Viper project manager Dan Andrews wrote in a NASA blog post on Wednesday, February 28th, all of Viper's flight instruments are installed, and the rover is more than 80% built. This is a major accomplishment, and shows the great progress being made by the dedicated Viper team, who are excited to see the rover come together. Viper's mission is critical for NASA's future lunar exploration efforts. For NASA's future lunar exploration efforts. Landing near the lunar south pole, Viper will embark on a quest to locate water, ice, and other resources essential for sustaining future Artemis missions. These missions will include historic milestones, such as stepping foot on the lunar surface during Artemis 3, slated for 2026. Over a span of 100 days, Viper will traverse the lunar south pole region, gathering crucial data to pinpoint the locations of water ice deposits and assess their accessibility. This pioneering endeavor will mark the first ever resource mapping mission on another celestial body, laying the groundwork for establishing a sustainable human presence presence on the moon. Viper's mission represents a significant advancement in lunar exploration. While previous satellite missions have provided valuable data on lunar water, Viper will offer a more detailed and intimate examination of the lunar surface. Equipped with scientific instruments and a drill capable of reaching depths of 3.3 feet or a meter, Viper will conduct thorough scans and investigate soil composition particularly in permanently shadowed craters known to harbor ice. 
These shadowed regions, among the coldest in the solar system, are believed to contain ice that has remained undisturbed for billions of years. Viper's exploration of these areas will be challenging as it navigates complex terrain and endures the extreme lunar environment, including frigid temperatures. With its preparations and capabilities, Viper is poised to achieve NASA's first comprehensive success following setbacks with previous missions like Astrobotic and IM-1. Its findings will play a crucial role in laying the foundation for the success of future Artemis missions, providing vital insights for sustained lunar exploration in the years to come. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.